All right, we're gonna do something real quick since there's hip hop involved. When I say hip, you say hop. Hip, hop. hip. Hop. When I say hip, you say hop. Hip, hop. hip, hop. When I say B, you say boy. B, boy. B. Boy. When I say B, you say boy. B, B. Yo, we got some B-boys right here for you. We got B-boy K-Rock. We got B-boy Cocker. We might even have some other ones hiding behind the screens back here. I mean the sheets, you know what I'm saying? If you cannot do what you see them doing, you need to be doing what I'm doing, which is called the soul clap. We get them hype, ready? Keep that clap going, keep that clap going. B-Boy Conquer in the house. K-Rock are representing DC-16 crew. They're representing all the above crew and they're representing the LPUGR crew. These guys get around. Literally. Some noise coming up though. Wait a second. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? We got B Boy Wavy. Give it up for B Boy Wavy. The Pop Master.
Give it up once again for B-Boy Wavy. All right, now I need y'all to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Does everybody know how to put a hand up? Okay, in hip hop, you put one hand up. And you know how to do this? Can you do this? Okay, everybody just keep doing that, okay? And make some noise for peace in a clip. Listen, chains on me and you're bringing people in pain. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah. People who have a bullseye on their foreheads. Bullseye on their foreheads. Our foreheads. Our foreheads. Our foreheads. So many things that affect our communities. But none have seen so really deep. I don't even know if we should even speak. But if we don't, then change will never be seen. Let me teach another lesson right here on this beat. It's like the hardest trial of our lives. Cause the area we live in just ain't right. Why? Cause they don't care about lives that don't make more than a thousand a day twice. Twice. Or even four times for that matter. Cause if we don't make that much cheddar, then we don't matter. Playing with our communities like the Mad Hatter. Met us with a something that has to get better. All my cousins live across the street from factories. All my friends is in the hills next to pine trees. The president knows that he's in the streets. I'm making easy things like breathing hard for me. But I guess we are not worth it. The president even said we can leave a little bit. Meaning that we can keep suffering. All because we don't make as much as his kids. Maybe that was an exaggeration. But what it's not is the cause that it's making. But the change and by the percentage of two. Meaning it's gonna get colder than ice cube. Man, what are we even gonna do? Something gets so hot that we can fry steak too. But we the ones that really get fried. Cause the pollution is coming straight for our eyes. You ask me if I'm to move away, little guy. All I ask is why do I have to move my life? Away from people who make millions in the night. What I need to do is change our minds. More polluted than the industries do us guys. Work to make our living place more safe. So we can sleep and live in the healthy days. Cause if you ask me how you doing us, it's the same. Me, it is that I rock my 
our lines. Change your visions, metaphors, the mountaintop is all written in the line. Yeah, written, in the line. written in the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corner store, liquor more, bring it. They keep us poor. No food up on the dishes. Yeah, who's in charge? Cause we telling them to bring it. We gon' rise and tell them more to stick it. We gon' make ourselves heard and you listen. Confidence is only in the distance. Try to break us, but will you be willing to take the town from our humble beginnings? Dominate the struggles in the system of weak. Greed only shares this to keep the people at sea. Oh man. Oh man. Give it up for peace in the clip. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. My name is Mark Mateus from All of the Above Hip Hop Academy. This is Peace in the Clip. That's B Boy Conquer. That's B Boy K Rock. And we appreciate and thank you guys for letting us be here. Thank you. Come on out, fellas. Come on out, come on out. Let's give these guys a huge round for putting that out there. Thank you so much, guys. Come on out. Take a round. We appreciate you guys, that was so awesome. Thank you for putting out your craft, amazing message. So good. Let's give it up. Thank you guys, appreciate you. So good. Monk Mateus from All the Above Hip Hop Academy. Couldn't happen without him and the leadership. Thank you so much, Let's give it up for Monk and All the Above Hip Hop Academy. All right, so we are going to transition into the main event, and we have an amazing speaker here for you all today as part of the annual Weggy Speaker Series. How about a huge thanks to the Weggy Foundation. Without the support for Econometrology, this wouldn't be happening. So huge round for the Weggy Foundation and all of them coming out today to support us and keeping those principles of Econometrology alive and inspired, so thank you so much. All right, we're going to get the screen dropped, we're gonna get the projector running, and we're gonna get this presentation going for you. Uh, while we do that, I think probably the best course of action would be for me to read the bio and introduce our speaker. So again, thank you gentlemen, appreciate you guys. We'll get the projector going here. Is it on? All right, we get the lighting shift spotlight off the screen, and we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so you guys remember last year, Dr. Drew Lanham came and spoke about ornithology, the environmental movement, and really embracing that as a person of color and the challenges that come with that. This year, we're continuing with that theme thanks to the leadership of the Weggie Foundation, and we have an amazing, renowned, and, and, and really talented speaker who's involved in so much traveling all over the country to spread the message around climate justice and the environmental justice movement. Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali is a co-host of the Hip Hop Caucus, Think 100%, the coolest show on climate change. And he recently took on the role as Vice President for Environmental Justice, Climate and Community Revitalization for the National Wildlife Federation, America's largest conservation organization. With 51 state and territorial affiliates, and more than six million members. Previously, Mustafa served as the former senior vice president of climate, environmental justice, and community revitalization for the Hip Hop Caucus. Mustafa is renowned as a national speaker, trainer, and facilitator specializing in social justice issues focused on revitalizing our most vulnerable communities. Throughout his career, Mr. Ali has conducted over 1,000 presentations across the country, 
including speeches, guest lectures, and trainings. He's also worked with over 500 domestic and international communities to secure environmental health and economic justice. Ali is a nationally recognized leader on environmental justice and climate change. His work has been grounded in the 17 principles of the environmental justice movement. The first principle affirms the sacredness of Mother Earth, ecological unity, and the interdependence of all species, and the right to be free from ecological destruction in all communities. So, we're going to go ahead and kick it off with a video, but let's give him a big round of applause while I get this video fired up for you. They call it a pipeline, but those on the front lines know that black snake was sent for us to grow, to shed the skin our ancestors pray, of wounds old and calloused so that we may stay, so that we may unite, unity our tool. No weapons are found in this court of rule. Men becoming ki'ai, steadfast in their guard, protecting women's hearts as their song become roots, roots to cast out healing for all sentient beings, to honor sacred mother, heart forward we heal. The salmon will run, the mountain will breathe, the rivers will flow. The rainbow is here and prophecy tells us all generations will hear. And our people that been living here for thousands of years Stand up We've been fighting for our freedom since the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria Stand up Like Geronimo, Sitting Bull, Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, Leonard Peltier Stand up Now they poison in the waters for our sons and our daughters so we on the frontier We won One nation, one cause, one people, one tribe, now it's us against the pipeline Get on your feet for Standing Rock and we'll show you how strong we could be when we unify To all my native people Planet Earth, it's been spinning, we've been living and dying, but giving birth the first of many nations, celebrating them days when all that got made came after what got me. These days we cater to these internet memes, internet streams, it seems them streams aren't clean. We need the whole story seen, we're hassling before water has gasoline in it. Malcolm X moment, Martin Luther King with a dream and war bonnet, wounded knee plus Alcatraz dog on it, this is for the rock, with prayers we stand on it. Oh yeah, we playing on it, the earth we camp on it, in a sweat lodge, singing our songs with grandfathers, heat rocks all in the spot, we splash on them with a beatbox from my boy B. Jam on it, said a prayer for the black snake killers, train on the front lines, they you're the realest, stand for your people, stand for your family, stand with standing rock, stand for humanity. It takes a group of people who actually care about you know, Mother Earth and life and water being sacred and the land being sacred to say we stand up. To all my native people, recognize yourself, keep your head up. To all my tribal people, recognize yourself, keep your head up. To all my native people, to all the original people, to all my indigenous people, recognize yourself, keep your head up. Mini Wachoni, water is life. Mini Wachoni. Water, water is life. Water is life. Water is life. Water is life. I stand. I stand. I stand with standing rock. I stand with standing rock. I stand with standing rock. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I stand with standing rock. Stand up. To all my native people. Woke up the giant. We won't go quiet. To all my tribal people, don't mistake our peace as we stand and fight. To all my native people, it's the calm before the storming. I can hear it coming. To all my tribal people, I'm ready for the battle when we ain't running. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up, 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 stand up
mirror, standing feet as history is on a sad repeat. Is it liberty or we just acting free as our land depletes from these hands of greed? See, fate is found, how we face the hounds. Take a vow for these sacred grounds. Make a sound that'll shake us out. Say aloud, what can save us now? What can save us now? Let's go ahead and give it up for Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali. Thanks for coming to our community. Appreciate you. All right. Appreciate you. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Y'all going to make me take the jacket off already. How y'all doing? Yo, can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all give it up to my brothers who killed it earlier? It's all about culture. Everybody do me a favor. On this side of the room, everybody say, can't stop. Grammarly is like my secret weapon. Won't stop. It's the all right, we're going to try it again. Can't stop. Let me come over here real quick. Won't stop. All right, together. Can't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. Everybody say, power to the people. See, y'all don't believe it. Say it again. Power to the people. Let me hear you say it again. Power to the people. You see, we have the ability to actually make real change happen. Each and every one of you who are in this room have the ability to help frame out what a new direction is going to look like. And sometimes a part of the narrative is not how young people have actually been the ones who have been making change happen. You'll see some slides, some pictures that are in the back that sort of highlight what you are doing, how you are helping to make change over the years. And I think we got some other things that are flowing in the background, so we'll give them one quick second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't dance as good as my brothers were. <laughs> All right. Matter of fact, everybody say boom, boom. boom, boom. Clap, clap. Clap, clap. Boom, boom. boom, boom. Clap, clap. Clap, clap. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Clap, clap. Clap, clap. You feel the flow in the room, the rhythm that's in the room today. There is this energy that surrounds social justice issues, that surrounds climate justice issues, that changes the game for how we have to win on climate change, on how we can be focused on helping our most vulnerable communities to be able to move from surviving to thriving. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, in all the thousands of presentations I've given, I always give honor to my mother and my grandmother who are the rocks that I stand on. My mom gave me some great information when I was really young. She said, you're going to have some tough days. By a show of hands, how many folks in the room have ever had a tough day? Raise your hand up high if you had a tough day. Everybody look around. Everybody look around. Find that person never had a tough day. Run over and touch them real quick. Just touch them and find out what that energy is that they got going on. <laughs> All right, I said touch them, not hit them. <laughs> but my mom and my grandmother told me that I was going to need to find some words of empowerment. And I've used these every day since I was 16 years old. That's when I first started working on social justice issues. I get up every morning, except for twice. I'll tell you all about those two times that I didn't do it. And I get up and I say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh-oh, somebody was feeling it, didn't you? Somebody said, we about to go to church. <laughs> y'all tried. I'm blessed and highly favored. Y'all ain't believe a word you just said, did you? Let's try it again. I'm blessed. Uh-oh, it got good to you, didn't it? And highly favored. All right, we're going to do it one time for the Trinity. I'm blessed and highly favored. And, highly favored. and you see, we are, because there's some real challenges that are out there, but there's also a lot of opportunity, and we get a chance to help people who sometimes are unheard, who are unseen, who sometimes people forget about. And that's the blessing in what we have here. You have the opportunity to go to an incredible school where you get a chance to be innovative, to try new things, and hopefully you're going to use that education, use that energy to actually help somebody's life to be a bit better. Does that make sense to everyone? And why do we need to do that? You know, I work with all kinds of incredible scientists, and I'm also blessed to work with a lot of artists. And sometimes people complicate, and they make things very complex um, about some of the impacts that are happening in our lives. And sometimes we don't necessarily have to do that. Let me ask you guys a question by a show of hands. 
How many folks in the room in the last 60 seconds, and I ran track in college, so in my head everything goes in seconds. How many folks in the room in the last 60 seconds have taken a breath of air? Raise your hand high if you've taken a breath of air. Everybody look around. Find the non-air breathers. Find them real quick. <laughs> silly question, isn't it? Y'all like, Mustafa, why are you going to ask me something that silly? You know, we know that it's an autonomic response. It's something that each and every one of us do. But think about this for a second. There are far too many people in our country who can't take a breath of fresh air. Doesn't make any sense, right? We live in one of the wealthiest countries in the world. But did you guys know that in our country, in our country, 200,000 people die prematurely from air pollution every year? How many people knew that by a show of hands? So only a couple folks actually knew that. Everybody's heard about what's been going on with gun violence, right? There's been some incredible marches. Uh, folks from Parkland and so many of the other schools have come together and helped to make change. We have more people who are dying from air pollution who are dying from gun violence. We have more people who are dying from air pollution than are dying from car crashes. That's crazy, right? We have more people who are dying from air pollution that are dying in wars across our planet. And that's why we have to get focused. By a show of hands, how many folks in the room know someone who has asthma? Raise your hand if you know somebody who has asthma. Everybody look around the room. Isn't that amazing that all of us know somebody who has asthma? It's crazy, right? Some people say, I got asthma, yes. If we would ask that question 30 years ago, 50 years ago, the majority of the hands wouldn't have went up. And that is tied to air pollution. 25 million people in our country have asthma. 25 million folks. Guess how many students and how many young people have asthma? Somebody said a lot. <laughs> said, I ain't about to get this answer wrong. Seven million. Seven million children in our country have asthma. And disproportionately, it is African American and Latino children who are the ones who are going to the emergency rooms. They're the ones who are actually losing their lives, along with others. And that's why we have to be focused. That's why we have to make change. That's why we have to hold people accountable sometimes when they are trying to roll back certain things that have been put in place to actually help save people's lives. You guys saw some uh, slides earlier of some of the communities that are actually dealing with this not too far away in Detroit, in southwest Detroit. 92% of the folks who are living in that area are dealing with unhealthy air quality. Kids are being expected to go to school just like you and to be able to learn, and in many instances, they can't breathe. So imagine if you couldn't breathe and you had to learn. Everybody do me a favor. Everybody take a deep breath in. Hold it for a second. Okay, let it out. I don't need nobody to pass it out. Think if you couldn't do that. Imagine if you lived in a community where you couldn't actually take a breath of fresh air. There's a community I want to tell you about. How many folks have ever been to Houston by a show of hands? So a few folks have been to Houston. For the folks who have been to Houston, how many folks have been to the Ship Channel? So only one hand has been there. It was been in the news lately. There have been some chemical plants that caught on fire, and there have been some things going on. There's a community called the Manchester community. It's in Houston, Texas, primarily a Latino community, hardworking folks doing everything right. When you go to their community, Imagine what you see when you open up your windows and you look out your house. Hopefully you see something that's pleasant to look at. Hopefully you get the chance to see green space, you get to see trees, you know, something positive there. Folks who are living in the Manchester community, they literally have facilities, petrochemical facilities surrounding their community. So instead of seeing trees, they see stacks with flames coming out of them, with pollution coming out of them. And I want you to think about this. Imagine you're standing on your porch, your back porch or your front porch, and you reached out your hand and you actually were able to touch where a business or an industry actually started. And that's what this community has to live with every day. You saw a picture of Cesar Chavez High School. You saw a track, you saw the school, and you saw stacks in the background with flames coming out of it. The students who go to school there, that's what they deal with every day but they have the same requirements that you do to be able to learn, to be able to do well on test, and they have to deal with that every day. How many athletes are in the room? So I want all the athletes and people who enjoy athletics to think about something. 
as an athlete, you're always trying to eat right, get rest, work out strong so that you can compete, right? Imagine if that's where you had to train on that track and you had to breathe that stuff in every day. And that's what some folks are dealing with across our country. By a show of hands, in the last 24 hours, how many folks in the room have taken a drink of water or another beverage? Everybody, Gatorade, Red Bull, <laughs> whatever it is that you do. Oh, wait a minute, hold your hands up high, because I saw some people, and they've had nothing to drink in 24 hours, right? Okay. I want you guys to think about something. It's real simple, actually. How many folks remember what happened in Flint, Michigan? It's amazing, right? So everybody knows about how the water quality was impacted, how lead got into a lot of young children's lives. And now everybody knows what the impacts of lead are, right? You know if you get impacted by lead, it's going to be real difficult to learn because it lowers IQ points and does a whole bunch of other things. But everybody knows about Flint. But did you guys know that there are over 3,000 other locations that have higher levels of lead in their water than Flint does, right? And you guys have seen some of the impacts that are happening to the Great Lakes with some of the algae blooms. And then earlier, I was really blessed that I got a chance to have a conversation with some of you. And one of the folks who was at our table started talking about some of the agricultural impacts that are happening. How many folks know what a CAFO is? A certified animal feeding operation. Not too many people, right? How many people know what this is? How many people know what a hog farm is? <laughs> folks are like, I really not try to go to the hog farms. So we've got places across our country where we have huge amounts of animals. And of course, animals are going to create waste. And that waste is going into the water. Um, and then you're seeing all these really interesting and tragic things that are happening from that pollution. And you guys are blessed that you're surrounded by a lot of clean water, but it's starting to shrink. 60 million people in our country, unfortunately, every year have to deal with unhealthy water quality. And then lots of times people will also say, well, I'll just go get water from, you know, I'll just get some water bottles, and, and that's where, you know, the plastic water bottles. Which communities do you think that when those are thrown away and not recycled, do you think they go to? He said lower income communities. They go to low income communities and communities of color. That's where the landfills are. And that's why we have to be really focused is because everything that we do impacts other communities. And that's why it's so important for us to one, understand what's going on, but also to be able to sort of share in our own ways how real change can actually happen. And now, besides all of these things that are going on with air pollution, and water pollution, we now have to deal with climate change. And climate change is actually going to make many of these things a lot more intense. How many folks remember the wildfires from last year? So almost every person in here remembers the wildfires. And how, when you saw pictures of what happened, because the planet's been warming up, we've got all these droughts that are going on, People are losing their property, they're losing their lives, but something else is going on that sometimes we don't pay attention to. So there were farm workers who were actually out working in the fields as those giant fires were happening, and what do you think they had to breathe? Exactly, all that air that had all the smoke and other things in it from the fires that were going on, and that's just gonna get more intense. And how many folks remember the hurricanes of a year ago? Does anybody not remember those hurricanes? Those have been rushing through. In places like Puerto Rico, where the infrastructure already needed some work, people started losing lives like crazy. Over 3,000 people died in Puerto Rico. And now we're working through trying to make sure that they're able to actually rebuild their communities and make real change happen. But we also got to realize that folks are human and that they deserve the same rights as everyone else. And sometimes, and I won't get too much into it, that doesn't seem to happen from everybody. But we also have another dynamic that's happening around the floods. And the floods, and I look at the river that's out here, and I know that the city's been doing all kinds of work to strengthen that and to build some natural infrastructure. We've got to be very focused on that, especially in the Midwest. You guys saw the floods that just happened not too long ago. 
uh, in places like Nebraska and, and a number of the other states. Uh, and back where I am uh, sometimes in the Maryland, D.C. area, we have a place called Ellicott City. Ellicott City is one of those historical places, and it's had two 500-year floods where people lost everything, and then they tried to rebuild, and then they lost everything again. So we got to be really focused on climate change and, and some of these impacts that are happening. And you guys are going to have to deal with, you know, all of the changes that are coming but thankfully, there are folks who are actually doing some incredible work who look like you, who are in the same age group as you, and who are helping to make real change happen. How many folks have heard of the Sunrise Movement? Just a few folks. How many folks have heard of the Green New Deal? So everybody's heard of that. The Sunrise Movement, uh, young leaders from all across the country are actually helping to drive that with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, and that is really focused on addressing climate change, addressing the emissions that are warming up the planet, um, but also in helping to create new sets of green jobs and making real change happen. All of this is super important, but we've got to figure out how do we reach a new set of people who traditionally haven't seen themselves as an environmentalist? How many folks in the room feel they're an environmentalist? So just a couple of hands, right? So I'm going to show you how you're wrong. How many folks in the room have taken a breath of air? Raise your hand. How many folks uh, took a drink of water, right? All of that is tied to environmentalism. If you don't have it, life is over. You saw the video uh, from Taboo. Uh, I don't know how many folks remember, but Taboo is with the Black Eyed Peas, um, and that actually won an MTV Music Award. And the reason that many of our Native American and indigenous brothers and sisters say that water is life is because it truly is, because if you don't have it, it's a wrap. Everything is over, and uh, you can't live very long without that. And so you have folks like This Is Zero Hour, uh, with Jamie and the rest of her uh, crew, who are actually helping to push to make sure that climate change is first and foremost in people's minds. But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you need to see some other folks um, who are actually helping to make change happen also. So how many folks in the room know who Common is? The rapper Common? Right. How about Neo? How many folks know who Neo is? How about Vic Mensa? How about Two Chains? <laughs> how about Wiz Khalifa? Okay. So I'm all about how do we build power? How do we make change happen? All those, how many folks know who Chance the Rapper is? Okay. So all of those folks have been a part of working with the Hip Hop Caucus. Uh, we had something called the Respect My Vote campaign. And many of you will be voting here real soon. 600,000 young people, returning citizens, people of color, have been a part of understanding that their vote translates into power, and artists can help us to make that change happen. I'm going to ask a real silly question. Let's see who doesn't. And I want you all to look around, too, to see who doesn't know this. How many folks know who Beyonce is? Everybody look around. So Beyonce is a great example. You know, she's been um, also doing some incredible work. So you guys remember the hurricane that came through Houston? So Beyonce was one of the first people to actually help to raise attention. She did a benefit concert, but she also, because sometimes it's easy to just do concerts, she also was there on the ground, and she was actually passing out food and water um, and hearing what was going on in people's lives and then staying connected and helping to raise the resources to make real change happen. That's the power of culture. That's how we help to make real change happen. And you can go down the list. Everybody knows who Jay-Z is? Yeah, I know Jay getting a little older now, right? But Jay is also now very focused on social justice issues. Chance, who's been a part of the Respect My Vote campaign, um, also big on education, giving back um, in Chicago, uh, and helping to make sure that folks have the resources they need to make real change happen. And you can go down the list of our artists um, who are making change happen. So I'm going to do this. When I say, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want you to yell out who your favorite artist is. And we're going to see which artist has the most people that their name is the one that gets called out. All right? Y'all ready? You ready? Everybody take a deep breath. Here we go. One, two, three. 
I don't think they heard you. Let's try it again. One, two, three. <laughs> so the reason that that's important is that each and every one of you have at least one artist that you feel connected to that represents something in your life, something that you would like to see changed or different, and that's the power of culture. When you see these young brothers on the stage killing it, who are not only dancing but rapping and sharing a message, we should have all of our artists who are connected to the things that are going on in our life on a daily basis. And that's how we make change. That's how we change this narrative. You guys are the generation where, if you look around this room, you see the rainbow that is the United States. And you don't see people putting barriers in between each other. That's been something that our parents and grandparents, unfortunately, had to deal with. And sometimes the legacy of that still exists. But we get a chance to make real change happen. And I'll leave you guys with this. Sometimes. We don't know that we have power. Sometimes we make the assumption that our voices don't matter, that we're invisible, and that change will never happen. And I'll share this with you guys real quickly. How many people in the room remember the Women's March? OK, a whole bunch of people. So here's the dynamic that most people don't talk about. There were a whole bunch of men who said that a million women would never come together. And sisters said, oh, yeah? I got something for you. And a million women came, plus, and marched. Yes, you should clap for that, yes. And women said that if I can't find somebody who will represent my views, who will help to protect my family, who will do the right thing, then I'll run for office myself. So not only did they march, but they took that energy back home, and they made real change happen. And now, if you look at Capitol Hill, it looks like America, or it's getting there. And that's because people said, I'm going to do something, and I'm going to make change happen. I'm going to ask y'all something you probably don't even remember this. How many people remember the science march? He was there. All right. <laughs> so I was there, too. And I'll be honest with y'all, because we're going to have some real talk. I didn't think scientists would ever come out their labs. This is just real. I didn't. <laughs> and then some of them said, Mustafa, is it OK? I said, yeah, come on. And they started, they cracked the door, and they came out a little bit. And then we started to march. And I said, left, right, left, right. Can I share a secret with y'all? They ain't have a whole lot of rhythm. <laughs> but they marched. And the important part of that is not the marching. That's important. But they took that energy, and they began to work with communities in groups because the federal government was saying science isn't real, and they started to pull back and all these different types of things. That's power. And then we have Black Lives Matter, right? Real talk? Y'all say real talk. Y'all say real talk. So, you know, brothers and sisters getting shot down in the streets sometimes, People decided to say, no, this is not, you're not just going to get away with this. No, it's just not going down like that. So people marched, but they also took that energy and began to organize and strategize and pushing on laws and using the civic process to make real change happen. That's power. And sometimes they don't teach us about power. You're not taught in elementary school, junior high school, high school. And guess what? When you get to college, you're probably not going to get taught about power either. But you have it. It's yours. It's your birthright and you should utilize it. And then, recently, with all the things that have been going on with gun violence, students began to say, my life is in danger. I'm scared to go to school some places sometimes, that we have to do something different, and that we're going to push people to do the right thing. Sometimes we don't realize how much power we actually have. Y'all do me a favor. Look to the person to your left. <laughs> <laughs> Look to the person to your right and help your neighbor out if they don't know the difference between their left and their right. It's okay. <laughs> Do me a favor. Reach your hand out to the person on your left-hand side. There you go. All right. Y'all working it out. Reach your hand out to the person on your right-hand side. Everybody do me a favor. Try and stand up while you're holding that person's hand. 
There you go. Oh. If you can stand up, if you can. I know it's been a long day already. It's all good. I see some people doing the wave already. I want y'all to think about something. So here's some real talk. This is some real talk for us. I want you to think about something because we find this dynamic that goes on sometimes in our country where we place these barriers between each other. Sometimes we never touch each other because, you know, when people actually begin to interact with people, it makes real change happen because we realize that we're more the same than we are different. I see some people feeling it back there in the background. They're so happy. Yes, you still owe me $5 for letting you hold that hand. Yes, I'm going to get that after this. So here is what I want you all to think about. Lots of times we are walking down the street, right? And we will pull out our cell phones, even if it ain't charged, and we will act like we're talking on our phone just to avoid somebody, right? Y'all know that's real. Uh-huh, everybody did. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Think about this. Here's another crazy thing that we do that separates us. How many folks have ever gotten on an elevator and you look at the numbers that are up there and you stare at them, hoping that nobody says anything to you. You're like, Lord, please just let me make it to the next floor. Right? Uh-huh. We separate ourselves. It's crazy, but we do it. It's something that we have to sometimes work to change. I want to remind you guys of something. There was somebody who was around before most of us were, but his words still resonate. They're still here. Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Give it up for Dr. King. I mean, Dr. King was a game changer. He said this. I want you all to think about the deepness of these words. Dr. King said that we come to these shores in different ships, right? But we're all in the same boat now. You know, in relationship to who we are as a country, we have to realize that we're all in this together in relationship to climate change, we now realize, yes, that we're all in this together. But I want y'all to remember the last thing is that you have power. Everybody do me a favor. Everybody say power. power. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right. I did that at Harvard. They were like, power. <laughs> I was like, it's okay. You can say it. It's not a problem. Let's try it again. Everybody say power. power. All right. Everybody put your right hand in the air like it's 1968 at the Olympics. Everybody ready? We're going to let folks in the state houses, in the White Houses, all these folks know that young people are coming and that real change is going to happen. Everybody say power. power. I'm Mustafa Santiago Ali. Thank you all for a couple minutes of your time. All right. All right. You, you want to ask questions or anything? Are they good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, they said we could have time for a couple of questions. All right, engaging stuff. Appreciate him meeting us where we are at, right? So often, thank you. So often, it's hard to connect necessarily with some of the experts in the field, and we appreciate him bringing it right to us where we're at and engaging with you guys and the culture that, that we're living. So how about some questions for Dr. Santiago Ali? Anybody like to ask a question, raise your hand, and somebody will bring you a microphone. So let's think about what, what are those thoughts you guys would like to have uh, put out there, and we'll come up with the microphones. In the front, right here in the front. <clears throat> Hi. Hey. Um, so I feel like growing up today, a lot of times, environmental issues are painted as like a white issue or like an elitist issue when really it's like mm -hmm. affecting a lot of minorities. I mean, it is disproportionately. So like, why do you think that is? That's a good question. Um, I think because for a while the environmental movement was uh, pretty much white led um, and folks who had resources had the ability to, you know, take time off from work or didn't even have to go to work so they could engage in those fights. The environmental justice movement actually started uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. You guys saw Warren County, North Carolina, where people were literally laying down in the streets to stop trucks from coming in that were ca uh, carrying cancer-causing chemicals. So, but there's a change now. Um, you know, frontline communities, uh, indigenous communities, communities of color are leading 
on environmental issues because it's their communities that are getting first and worst, um, and they're the ones that are dealing with some of these issues. But I don't want folks to get it twisted because sometimes we don't also talk about uh, white brothers and sisters, low-income white folks, working-class white folks who are also catching it. Um, if you go to Appalachia, where uh, part of the time where I was born, or excuse me, where I was raised before I also spent time here in Michigan, you will find uh, some of the things that are going on in the coal fields, the mountaintop mining. Now, those are mostly uh, working class and lower income white communities. If you look at some of the fracking that's going on and the impacts that are happening, uh, a lot of that is happening also uh, in white communities, along with all the impacts that are happening in communities of color as well. So that's why it's important for us to all realize that we're in this together and that you know, we can make real change happen. As we move toward green energy uh, and new green jobs, we have to make sure that equity is a part of that um, and that those opportunities are going to all communities as well. Um, but you guys are changing the game. You're changing the game because like some of those groups, Sunrise Movement, if you look at Sunrise Movement, very diverse. Uh, many of the organizations are women-led. Um, if you look at This Is Zero Hour, that's a great example. So they're helping folks to understand that both climate and environment is one where frontline communities have to be a driver in that process. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking, and I appreciate it. Thank you, sister. Yep. There were some questions. Oh, I got one right here. Thank you. Um, yep. So I know that the Hip Hop Caucus is all about advocating for young people to vote and um, use their voice. How can young people who aren't old enough to vote advocate? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Actually, there was a couple of these presidential town halls you see, and there have been young people who have been talking just about that. So you can educate uh, your parents about why these issues are important or others who are of voting age, but you can also volunteer, um, and you can continue to move and educate people, which is powerful, because when you put it in your voice, through your eyes, through your sets of experiences, it'll touch somebody who maybe had normally been touched. And if people see you, if you're 14 or 15, who are saying, this is important, and as soon as I get my chance, I'm going to get down and get into it, it'll motivate other people to also do it. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with checking in with folks and being like, yo, have you registered to vote yet? Have you registered to vote yet? Have you registered to vote yet? And just keep coming back until people got it. And then when it comes time to vote, and I never tell folks who to vote for. I do say vote for somebody who cares about your community, and I'll leave it at that. But you can make sure, if you're 16 and you have access to a car and your parents are in support of you helping maybe some elders in the community to get to the polling place, that's a powerful statement right there. Um, or, you know, sort of helping other folks to get there. Or you could work with your local uh, organizations that you're a part of. If you're um, a faith-based person, you can work with them and maybe do some type of a fundraising event to get a bus um, to help people to get to the polls. There's all kinds of things that we can do. Or, since we're talking about culture, you can use your gifts to talk about voting through poetry, through rap, through music, through all kinds of different things. You have so much power sometimes that you just sometimes forget that you have. So that's a long answer, but I wanted to make sure I gave you the fullness of the opportunities that you have. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Oh, and just let me share with folks also as we're transitioning to the next question. The Hip Hop Caucus has the Respect My Vote campaign, but we also have uh, People's Climate Music where we create all kinds of content. Um, and we put out an album called Home. What do you think Home stands for? Okay, all that. Yes, all that. Plus, it actually stands for Heal Our Mother Earth. And all kinds of incredible artists um, have been a part of that, and the caucus still continues to, to work with a number of artists around that. So that's just another way that we can spread the message uh, and help make change happen. Yes, sir. And one thing I'll just say, we follow up. Everybody votes with their dollars. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. S support, the, support those companies that you know are doing the right thing. Here's yeah. another question. Yep. What can each of us do as individuals to help mitigate climate change? Yeah, there's so much we can do. I mean, the big stuff is, you know, get engaged with campaigns, help to push, make change happen. But everything you do can lower some of the emissions. You know, things our parents tell us. My dad used to tell me all the time, turn the heat down, turn the lights off when you're not in the room. All that stuff actually makes a difference. 
You know, um, when you're old enough to be able to move toward um, utilizing public transportation in a way around electric vehicles or buses or some of the other types of things that you may use, that's another way of doing it. Uh, water conservation is also super important as well. Um, but here's one of the things that I think is the most important. And I was talking with uh, some of the other students earlier is that there are all kinds of grassroots organizations and local organizations who are here in this area who can use your help if, and everybody pay attention to this, if you are moving into that space authentically. I often talk about authentic collaborative partnerships, and that means that you're not coming in with your own sets of agendas, but you're actually listening to what communities are trying to accomplish and work on, and then you're bringing your gifts and skills uh, to be able to better help that to happen, and that's powerful, because trust me, Folks want young people to be a part of the process, and they want you to lead as well. Um, so you have that opportunity. So there are all kinds of things, from the little teeny tiny things all the way up to the big stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Others in the front. You're going to make me walk all the way up there, aren't you guys? <laughs> you got all kinds of people in that. All right, all right. Everybody, the voices in the back get heard too, right? That's right, tell them to give you some love, just because you're in the back. Yes. Um, so can you stand up so everybody can see your beautiful face? What can I do to help? Like, what can I do to help other people? What can you do? Yeah. Here's how I answer that question. What can you do? No, seriously. What would you like to do? Help people in Flint. OK. I mean, that's admirable. And that's, you know, they would love to have that help. So there are a number of organizations that are on the ground in Flint that continue. Did you all know that folks in Flint still don't have clean drinking water? Yeah. And I don't know if you all saw the picture of Jaden Smith. Yeah. Jaden's been in it. But a whole bunch of other folks have been in there also. You all saw Snoop? Yeah. Snoop is actually really cool. <laughs> And Snoop also has been in. There have been so many people that are in there, but just because you see celebrities doesn't mean that folks don't need you. They need you just as much um, as some of the other folks who have. Uh, so all of that to be said, volunteer. Um, tell the story. Utilize your social media to keep it uh, in the attention of the country that folks are still in need of help, whether it's here in Grand Rapids or if it's in Flint or Detroit or a number of other places across the country, use your voice. Don't be afraid. I see so many people who, when you sit down one-on-one -on -one with them, they're so articulate, they're so passionate, and I'm like, well, why don't you just take your iPhone out? How many folks have a cell phone? Everybody look around the room. Almost every person, right? Why aren't you taking your phone out and sharing with the world what your thoughts are? Right? And lots of times we're just scared. We're like, well, somebody might not like what I'm going to say. Guess what? You're right. There are going to be some people who aren't. Or I'm not a scientist, or I'm not a lawyer, or whatever. You're just as smart, and you have just as much to offer as the rest of them. So offer the things that you care about, and use the way that feels best to you to share that. And I guarantee you, without a doubt, that it'll help make change happen. Because I bet you when the brothers that you saw up here on stage both rapping and dancing, there are probably were people in the beginning who said, why are you doing that? It ain't going to be no good. Ain't nobody ever going to pay attention to you. And now look who they are right now. Look how they motivated and touched all of you. And imagine where they're going to be in a year. You may see them on TV on some major show. You may see them having an album or an EP, or all these other types of things. So you have just as much to give as everybody else. And thank you for that question. We got time for one more? Yep, one more. All right, we got right here one more. <laughs> that must be a good one, because everybody is pushed to it. Do I need to come up there? Wait, Mr. I'm coming up. Everybody give them a round of applause because they're feeling a little scared, a little lonely. Yeah. All 
All right, who's got the question? All right. Where's the microphone? Did I make it faster? Y'all gonna have to get your principal. You're gonna make them run some steps, right? Oh, getting some steps in today for sure. All right. Hey, sister. Real quick, uh, we got somebody who needs right. to get picked up. Emmy Zaitama needs okay. to go to the office. They said we got to take two questions because somebody else right here has one too. All right. All right. How? What's your name and how old are you? Um, I'm Quinn and I'm 12. All right. Everybody, give it up for Quinn. who's 12. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. What's the question? So there are a lot of people out there who may have no social media presence mm -hmm. or um, are too shy to like speak up yep. or really don't know what they can do to help. Yep. Like, what can those people do who really don't have many choices? Okay, well everybody has choices, but let's start with, do you have at least one friend? Yes. I look like you got a whole crew. <laughs> So you got mad love, right? So you can start with conversations just with your friends, right? And then you guys can sit down and come together and talk about, well, what is it that we can do? And find out what each one of you's sort of gift is that you've been blessed with, and then get it in the mix, and then just start to build. Next time you're at the mall, and everybody's chopping it up, and everybody's sitting around, and you're like, yo, have you heard about climate change? Or have you heard about something else? and then just have a conversation about it, and then start to build. And the next thing I know, I'll come back next year, and you'll be down there on that main stage talking. How about that? Let's give them a round of applause. No. All right, did you have a question? We have one last question, I wanna make sure. Oh, you don't want to? You wanna just whisper it to me? Okay, hang on, I'm coming. Oh, that's a great question. You sure you don't want them to hear it from you? She said, sister, what is your name? Kelly. Kelly, Kelly how old are you? 11. Kelly, 11. Y'all give a round of applause to Kelly, who's 11. <laughs> Kelly said, Kelly said, why has it taken so long for people to realize that bad things are happening? Did I catch it right, Kelly? Yes, she said yes. So I think that there's this thing called evolution, right? And sometimes we think about evolution in the sense of humans and our transition to who we are and what we are today. There sometimes also has to be an evolution in our minds and in our hearts and in our culture um, to be able to realize that some of the impacts that are happening are real and change has to happen. So let's do this so that we're being very honest. Let's make sure that we're not demonizing um, or putting down folks uh, who worked in the coal industry and the oil industry and some others, because there was a time that that was something that was needed, right? But now this is a new time, and we have different sets of opportunities. We have wind and we have solar, and we have other renewable energy that can help us to be in a better place. And the other part, if we're gonna have real talk, is some of the impacts that were happening were happening to people that others sometimes didn't put value on their lives. And thank goodness we are evolving now to realize that everybody's life matters and that we have to make real change happen. And I think that was some of the reasons that we were where we were in the past, but the positive is that real change is happening. And it's happening because each and every one of you guys, and I'm getting tired, so I'm about to sit down. Everybody say power. power. Say power. power. Say power to, power to the people. Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you.